welcome to another episode of Literary Gladiators, the show where we discuss and debate literature in all of its forms. Truth. If it's written work, it's game. Or dead. What are you looking at? Larry. Hi, I'm Larry. What are you doing? No. Oh. What's happening? Oh my god. I am. My name is. Oh! Let's meet. The, let's try again and meet the panel. <clears throat> I'm Larry. Sorry, uh, sorry, I'm late, guys. <laughs> Where's my cheese? Did I'm, someone eat my cheese? I'm cutting it. <laughs> oh, we all know I was gonna make that joke. Let me guess, Miss, Mr. Hand ate my cheese. Yes, he did. Well, at least there's some more. Hi, I'm Ari. I'm uh, I, I'm, this is Charles. And I'm Josh, and I'm in paradise. And right? I can't open the laughing cow cheese. Sorry. Let's, I'm actually thinking about where to get some more your, cheese. Uh, Let's see how I go about it. I love laughing cow cheese. Mm -hmm. well, I actually while Josh is doing that today, as you can tell, we're going over uh, works about cheese. Was or cheese over, poetry. We're going over cheese poetry for the fifth oh, season finale. Oh, I forgot finale. the crackers. They're over there. Here we go. Sugar honey. Already. Oh, honey. <laughs> I forgot the I crackers. I will uh, have somebody run in now. Try it. Yes. Awesome. Okay, yes. No, I'm just kidding. Of course. So we got... Charles got some laughing cow Swiss. I love laughing cow Swiss. Platter. We have uh, starting from the upper right hand corner. Already. We have uh, Stilton. We have Merlot. We have Pecorino Tartufo and Manchego cheese. And laughing cow. Yeah, and the laughing cow. Oh, I don't know how they keep those cows so happy. So underrated. So is laughing cow. I'd love to try some. I'm, mm -hmm. Right over there. All right, guys. All right, I have questions. Questions. No cheese. Right Pack them one. back now. You can tell that this is going to be a very casual episode. <laughs> I don't know how you feel. So, all you out there, how's it all going? Ready. First question is: G.K. Chesterton, Chesterton, once admitted that. Poets have been mysteriously silent on the subject of cheese. Would you agree? Well, it's a cheesy subject. Get word of the word mysterious, and I agree with you. Hmm. Um, I guess I would agree with that, the way you said it, Ari. What the mystery is. Felt was amazing. I would say that uh, with regard to... Uh, Cheese and poetry, it's not, I would, I wish that there was more of it. And that, uh, there, uh, there is somebody that's deemed the cheese poet. His name is James McIntyre, and he's Canadian. But he's also deemed as the worst poet because they ridicule the idea of, uh, writing about topics like cheese. Uh, and which one is this again? That one is Manchego. Yeah, that's a hard one. Earlier, we, uh, earlier in the season, we were talking about uh, uh, poetry and how people take it more seriously when it's uh, sad poetry and when it's about uh, darker topics and happier topics are a bit more ridiculed. And I think that that's especially and unfortunately the case. They're not just harder to cheese. they're harder to read. They're also harder to write. Mm -hmm. The positive ones. Mm -hmm. Red. But I'm looking at some of the um, cheese poems that we found online, and I, this Stilton was at my request. I asked for mm -hmm. it to be there. It's very strong and it's very tasty. Mm. But we have a sonnet to a Stilton cheese by the um, author that Josh just mentioned, by G.K. Chesterton, and it's um, wrote, it's very had very old uh, English in it. But it's still extremely interesting. I've never tried this kind of cheese, but I'm going to give it a shot. Does, some, does someone want to read it? you want me to read it? Or? I think the imagery uh, in general is just... I'm going to be leaving a link down below to this particular yep. uh, blog. But, uh, yeah, you can go read it. Well, now I've got something in my mouth. <laughs> Called cheese. For the parts that you feel are essential. Well, as I am currently eating Stilton cheese, I think there are several lines I like in here. Like, I like the 
how he um, t uh, compares the cheese to a tall green volcano. That's how, when the Stilton goes into my mouth, it starts very strong, and then it just explodes into so many flavors that are all very similar, but they're not quite the same. I'll say. That's a great way to put it. It's, uh, it's rich, it's creamy, and, uh, but I think that in, uh, Chesterton is, uh, comparing it to a, uh, he's bringing up its natural beauty, and which is quite, uh, the whole idea of uh, to Stilton in the field, she is a fen. For she is a fen far as the eye can scour, league after grassy lee from Lincoln Tower. To Stilton in the field, she is a fen. Which I love that contention. It really harps on that idea that uh, there is this ecstatic beauty to it, not just basic beauty. And that's, I mean, yeah, yeah. This is a beautiful hey, spread. Right. Which one is this? Still, not one. the blue cheese. Could you give me a piece of that, please? No. I'm gonna find out what all the fuss is about, man. Mm -hmm. I recommend eating it with crackers. It's very strong by itself. Okay. I tried it myself. I think that it really, uh, it has that creamy oomph that is much uh, uh, different than, say, the. Uh, I had gorgonzola cheese, which is gorgonzola is pretty good, but I like Stilton better. Gorgonzola's got a little bit of a different taste to it. It's a bit more abrasive. It's drier. Another yeah. great blue cheese is uh, Roquefort. Now this one, the Manchego, this one is uh, I, I just tried that one. I haven't had that one possibly ever, but it was really good. It's not as strong as or creamy as the Stilton. It's much more dry, but it still tastes pretty good. I attest to what McCalvin said. Uh, I like it. Goats make the best milk. Cows make, make the, the best, best butter. Cheese. Butter. Sheep make the best cheese. Mm. You have any sheep cheese in there? Manchego's a sheep cheese. Pecorino Tartufo's a sheep cheese. The other two are cow. <clears throat> like laughing cow. Merlot. <laughs> I <don't> really <laughs> <the> Stolten. <laughs> my my face. What a laughing cow. We have four so cheeses. Oh, in, my, in my opinion, and laughing cow. I, I think out of these, oh. out of these five cheeses, uh, I'd say the Stolten's still my favorite. Probably the Swiss would be next. I haven't tried those two yet, but which one, which one are those again? Laughing Cow. Boy, I really like that. That's salt. Merlot, Pecorino Tartufo, Manchego. Okay, I've had Merlot before. I never have. I've had the wine before. Mm -hmm. Pecorino Tartufo. That was actually recent. I thought I had had it before, but someone suggested it again. Yeah, I had Merlot once and... Once! Mm. Once. I think this is more... This episode... Uh, just a disclaimer, this is an episode. It's an excuse for us to talk about cheese. <laughs> and to eat cheese. And, and to eat, eat cheese. And so <laughs> there's, another, there's another poem here. It's pretty interesting. And this time it's about Charles as a laughing cow Swiss cheese. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Swiss cheese. I never thought the moon looked like Swiss cheese. From Pennsylvania, it's merely a cloudy marble brushed with blue. But if I ever saw a moon... The sandwich between rye and honey baked ham, I would spread sunny yellow mustard atop and give you the taste of my universe. It's by a guy named Wes Ward. In my own annotation, I only I two words that stuck out to me were flirtatious and humorous. Yeah. I think this is the cheesiest uh No pun intended. No pun intended. Uh what's this? Uh cheese. Oh, that's, that's summer low. low. It's the it's the Hello. Cheesiest, no pun intended, pickup line that you can. Uh, Honey. Yes. That you can uh, make men, uh, that you can uh, use on a significant. Um, but I have a work about cheese. I oh do I? I'm done. You got something, Charles? Yes. Um, that's good. You got a little bit of stuff on that, right? I got honey all over my hand here. How you doing? Hi, Pot. No! <laughs> Don't you dare. Mm. Hi, Pot. Um, I actually, I like grated cheese. Mm. Uh, ha, ha. But not really. Uh, I do like that, too. Yes, I... Uh, this is good. Mm. I don't know what this is. Pecorino Tartufo. Which one is that? This one's, uh... Right there. My, uh, right here? No, this one. That one. Uh, yeah, my, it one. has some sort of herb in it, doesn't it? Truffle. My, uh, it like I'm fun. the only one in my household that likes it. Which. I like it. It's good. That's good to hear. Oh, yeah. Laughing cow. So for now, Josh, you're you're not at least for right now. You're not the only person in your household that likes it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. 
I don't know if I like it or not. Mm. I actually wrote on my Facebook. I'll eat just about any cheese. Well, I, I actually... Um, I wrote on my Facebook once. Um, any real cheese. This is real cheese. Oh, yeah, I'm even... Gonna... I'm talking about the fancy ones, guys. I'm not talking about... I like a good cheddar. <laughs> it's just American it's and copycat Swiss. What, what, what do you like better, sharp or mild? Depends on my mood. I would say sharp. I have to write. To, I'm going to write to the corporate and say, "I love your cow, laughing cow cheese." Um, I I think they're going to just say you're an idiot. But thank you for this is really you. interesting. You know where? You want to hear a horrible joke? You want to know where the laughing cows go? At a funny farm. No. <laughs> That's an awful Farley style joke. Yeah, thank I know. You very I took, much. I took it from him. You think? We, let's just present the next question. Well, yeah. All right. What poem about cheese catches your attention the most and why out of this list? The cheese one. Definitely the Stilton one. If I say that again, you can all slap me. Definitely the Stilton one. To me, it's either the Stilton or the Swiss. They're both good. I like the Merlot, you know why? This this cheese storm one's a little Mm. confusing. We'll get to that in a minute. Oh, I I did like a poet's part as well. Can I read my yeah, yeah. This is yeah. Charlie. Charlie was a brand yeah. new species. A brand new species. Do, 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 do. Sorry. The, the <laughs> texture on the I already rind. have laughing cow. I don't care. The texture on the rind of the, of the Merlot um, is really uh, it's like got little crunchies in it or something. That's a really strange poem. Well, actually, I I had I try to keep it to one page because these are stanzas, so I just did indentations here. Mm. Um, this is about grated cheese, and of course, I love pasta. Uh, story time. I love stories. Um, <laughs> I'm laughing cow now. Uh, that's okay. Read it. Um, all right. He has the ugliest smug in Malawi and doesn't give a zambari about salami. He is herbivorous, not carnivorous. Loves grass. What? Herbivores. Like, uh, it's, yeah. He is herbivorous, not carnivorous. Loves grass, stains, and drinks tsunamis. Next stanza. Uh, he twirls like a dervish Sufi master. Eats pasta with grated cheese and plaster. Who loves Italians with great big bunions. And dunks his donuts in barbecue. That's appetizing. <clears throat> the townspeople think him. The townspeople think him raving mad. But when he sings, he ain't half bad. He is a new species who smells like cheese. Uh, man, man, and an antique mute, a mutant, and a and a rad. If you meet him in the forest, let him be, because he likes to run. Underwear free. Just look away, okay? Does, Don't dare to look when he pisses on a tree. Yeah. Now, I could not interpret that for the life of me, but I thought you wrote. No, I didn't. This is actually from a collection, and I'm going to give you the, uh, well, I got it from copyright, Mystic Rose. Uh, I think this was actually part of an essay. Uh, you know, I just went, you know, of course, stupid, lazy me. I went online, I was like, I need poetry, some, you know. But I wrote it a few times, and, you know, still, uh, it's, yeah. a, it's a, a graded cheese poem. So, uh, copyright, uh, Mystic Rose, and the year it posted was this current year, 2016. Um, and the title of the poem is A Brand New Species. So basically, grated cheese, I, I think, can go on pretty much everything. Uh, and when I say everything, I don't mean every single thing on the planet. Uh, obviously, pasta, I love how people walk in front of me. I just love it. No, I'm kidding. Um, well, it, cough, Charlie, cough. <laughs> uh, laughing couch. I, I mean, grated cheese goes well on pasta. It can also go on a salad. Too, mm. Believe it or not, it also, um, especially with your soup. I, you know, whenever I have myself a bowl of pasta basil, I'll, um, I'll sometimes I'll empty the container, and of course, I'll pay for it the next day. But still, uh, hey, but never on the seafood. I know. Right? <laughs> I, you know, with, last night I had fish for dinner. I had tilapia. No, you can have it. I had a, a tilapia, and you know, and I worked in seafood, so I, you know, a little bit, but. Uh, yeah. Olive oil, garlic, and you know, and I just let it simmer a little bit. Put it in the oven. Some sp- Italian spices, oregano. <coughs> Take it out of the oven, and of course, hopefully, it's done. Because <laughs> you can never really tell when fish is done, unless it's smoldering hot. I learned that my first day at seafood. Anyway, uh, long story short, uh, I put a little bit of the uh, grated cheese on it, and yeah, that really just. I really like that. Yeah. 
It really, mm. you know, yeah. It enhances the flavor. It's a, a flavor enhancement, if you will. What is it? The, the uh, sorry. Huh? The pecorino uh, tufo, uh, tufo, 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 yeah, or tufo. Yeah, that's excellent. Mm. I think that might be my favorite. Yeah, yeah, this one's pretty good. Yeah. Great. <coughs> Can we have some laughing cow cheese in there, folks? No. Okay. Is this actual cheese? Yeah. <laughs> Crackers, pecorini. I picked that. Oh, I picked that. And, uh, I picked the palm too. Honey. Yeah, and of I, course I take no credit for this because it is not mine. And yeah. What did you pick, Larry? I picked uh. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's The Parable. Mm. You know that? It's a real short one. And it's basically these cheese mites are living inside the cheese and they're trying to talk about where the cheese came from. So mm -hmm. That's kind of like schizo. Yeah. Where's all this cheese? <laughs> Wait, it's kind of like metaphorical of, of our quest to find understanding about where we come from and stuff mm. like that. And then the, the, the basic idea is that these cheese mites, you know, they're debating it and debating it and debating it, but they'll never guess that it came from a cow. Mm. You know, that kind of idea is like, who knows, you know, we could be completely barking off the wrong tree with our own metaphysical quest, and uh, we'll never know. I just, rap, really. speaking of barking up the wrong tree, I'm thinking about changing my Facebook photo <laughs> to one of the last... <laughs> uh, I do have family on Facebook, and I'll say, yep, he's really lost his... Opinion. I do want to read some uh, of uh, James McIntyre's poetry. If, if he has a collection, I may even pick one of those up. But on this list, I like the sonnet to a Stilton cheese. I like Swiss cheese. And I think a poet's hope, which, uh, to be like some valley cheese local but prized elsewhere, is very uh, descriptive and uh, a creative way of... Uh, Approaching uh, one's desire. Trying to be civilized as I do this here. Which I can put that little stuff out. So, Josh, would, cracker, please. unrelated, but what made you a uh, connoisseur? Nice. I'll give you a cracker so and I'll raise you a I cracker. I think it's just the idea nice. that there's. It's, Does anyone, do you know about the, I think the it's just, band cracker? It's a very similar idea to why I love reading. It's the reason I love That's reading. Still, still check out season six, though. It's going to be awesome. A lot of people say that they love reading because of the escapism. I love reading because there, everything is possible with reading. reading yeah, okay, that makes more books sense. Books and written text can be about anything. Yeah, and like, they, and sometimes like some cheese. people make some... I read a poem once that was about how beautiful... I, I don't want to say it because Charles is here. I just remembered. What? Never mind. I was, what it is is there's actually a poem that I read that was about the beauty of household items. Like a horny vacuum cleaner. <laughs> laughing cow right here already so he was talking about the, the table and, and uh, 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 the vacuum cleaner was one of them and another one was a uh, uh, dishwasher and, uh, and, he, and he put it into a collection <laughs> already we're digressing the bit. reason I, uh, I should get my <laughs> the re reason I love reading is because of the endless opportunities. Yeah, I do agree with him. The that. reason I love cheese is because of the endless opportunities. Endless opportunity. The fact that you, there, there's so much can be, that can be offered with cheese in so many different ways, and there's just so much that you can learn about cheese you have your through rise. its taste, through its scent, through the culture that. Uh, it's like using the senses, like yeah. you mentioned in a previous video. Mm -hmm. And it's also like, the same for cookies. Yeah, same for cookies. cookies. Yeah, yeah right? anything. You have your Oreo. But like you could say you could you thing. could say yeah, you could be like a cookie connoisseur. Yeah. Already. Good. Also, uh, are there any other works about cheese that catch your attention? Uh, a cookbook. And I I know I've made jokes in the past. Hey, it's written word in the name. And yeah. there are I I own cheese cookbooks. I am. Um, have you ever made your own cheese? Uh, no. I haven't. I would yeah, probably yeah. burn the house down because I'm not that good in the kitchen. Well, first of all, if you're going to make cheese, it's not going to be in the kitchen. Mm. What's it going to be? I don't want to know. Depends on what kind of cheese. I think a, a soft cheese. So I am going to tell you and you, the viewers, that I have, in fact, milked a cow before. And there's a picture I can attach to. <laughs> <laughs> there is. Okay. I was on a when I was in te a tenth grade. Or, Do they really have no twelfth grade? When I was in twelfth grade, going to twelfth grade, I went to camp that summer, and we went on this trip. This is in Wisconsin. We went to a farm in Wisconsin, and they showed us how to 
um, how the how like all the animals were like milked and handled and stuff, and we actually got the opportunity to milk cows. And what happened is I was milking the cow, and the cow got mad at me and kicked me. Did it hurt? No, he didn't. He didn't hit me. He just tried to kick me, and he didn't hit me. There's actually a video. <laughs> so you milked the cow. Um, I was milking it, and he got right. mad because I was doing it wrong. So he kicked me, or at least tried to <laughs> kick me. I'm a God-fearing Catholic, but I can make a really bad joke. <laughs> so I'm just saying I'm familiar with uh, milking cows. If you need someone to milk your cow, and your farmers are unreliable. I could use some money, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ari, I honestly, I command you on milking a cow. Um, uh, I can make another reference. It wasn't my no. It was it was in a distant Are relative? Are you filming your individual videos from Wisconsin? Uh, that would be that would be cool if I ever went back there and did like an individual video. Mm -hmm. And maybe go to the maybe go to the library I used to work at. And this is Bessie who tried to mold me when I but tried milking her. Works about cheese. I would say the cheese plate by Max McCalman mm -hmm. is something that really caught my attention. Mm -hmm. uh, I learned a lot from there. If you wanted Happy. fictional works that feature yeah, or about me. cheese, uh, <coughs> some uh, works that I enjoyed. I'm with you, Charlie. I enjoyed Thank I Am you. the Cheese by Robert Cormier, which mm -hmm. is only called it's called such because of the line in the Farmer of Dell. The but, farmer in the uh, Dell. The farmer in the Dell. I hold the there you go. Cheese. The cheese stands alone. The cheese stands, <laughs> stands alone. alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about of cheese? Course. How about, but, uh, how about she? What is he gonna say? Cheesecake. Mm. Cheesecake is good. Man. I was yeah, never, I honestly, I was never a fan of cheesecake, but then I started eating this uh, Carmine's. Uh, uh, yeah, of course, you know, from New York, and uh, I had some of this Carmine's cheesecake. And I said, Mom, this is delicious. She said, yeah, that's because you went one day without saying cookie. There was a self-help book called Who Moved My Cheese by Dr. Spencer Johnson. I wasn't fond of it. I think that it was a lot of money for such short... Arlene Sardine. <laughs> I, Arlene Sardine was worse, but... Uh, if you haven't gone and seen Arlene Sardine, you might just want to watch it just because of how horrible it was. But back to what Josh was saying. Mm. But a lot of uh, cheese lovers, uh, I think that this is the, the essence of that. Uh, anybody here recommend a, a work? I, don't, I can't really recommend it because I don't remember who wrote it and what the title was, but I did read a three-page... It wasn't really a poem. It was more of an essay. On I think I had like six of these. Cheese... <laughs> On like okay. cheese and how it relate, like comparing different cheeses to different items. Hmm. I think like someone had compared. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll take Stilton for example. I think he compared Stilton to like being in the weight room, like tell, lifting weights. Tell me, uh, uh, find out what it is. Tell me, and I'll read it. <laughs> All right, I'll I'll have to see if I can find it again. And then if I like it, I'll eat it. Mm. Larry, any suggestions? No. I just suggest that you eat cheese. Good idea. Yeah, that's a great and, and, suggestion. You know what? Honestly, it's your, you got your calcium, your protein. Um, yes, I'll admit, the laughing cow cheese It's is, a little bit fatty, but you know what? It, once in a while, it's not going to kill you. Speaking no, and like Josh was saying earlier, there's so much opportunity for discovering great flavors. Mm -hmm. And also, you like a, you know... With with cheese, we've done a cookie book. Um, we yeah, the cookie I book. Can't stop eating this cheese right here. I know. I like, did I'm a, a I'm a you stop cutting the cheese. Did. I'm a total cheese novice. I, I, this is the most uh, experience I've ever had eating cheese. This you're year. probably you. You're a cheese novice. I'm a cheese intermediate, and Josh is a cheese expert. And what am I, a chopped liver? Yes. Thank you. No, Ladies you're, and you're gentlemen, this is what we do at our sessions here on Literary Gladiators. <laughs> discuss and debate literature. So, and I guess to, yes. to finish and cookies. up, to, and finish, cookies. to start finishing up, I wanted to mention that we will, this is the end of season five, we're going to start season six very, very soon. Um, looking forward to that. Is this screen stuff out already? You can watch the entirety of season five plus any other season that we've already done on the Literary Gladiators. We got uh, one more question. Oh, okay. Oh, we have one more is, question. But remember that for later. There'll, there'll be a test. <laughs> there will be a quiz. What kind Wait, of what? cheese do you feel more people need to try? You want to start with, uh, let's start with Larry. All right, let's start with Larry. I'm going to go with that Pecorino, uh, this Pusquerana. You know, Torfito. High five. Huh. All right, 
<clears throat> Josh, I'll make a deal with you. Oh, is it a hickory? That's so my laughing cow. I'll try that. I think I'm going to pass. All right, fine. Right. Right. I'd say any of these four cheese. I mean, you know what, Josh? I will say this one was really good. I will say that. I this that. one is. I don't know what this one is. Manchego. Manchego. The Manchego is definitely my favorite of the ones that I tried for the first time here. That would be one and two. This one's also extremely good. Not a huge fan of that one. Um, still, I already liked. But if I had to choose one cheese for anyone to try. And you haven't tried yet? I would definitely go with Munster. I like Munster. I do. Oh, like and it. Pepper Jack. Pepper Jack. Actually, Pepper Jack I like better. Pepper Jack's my favorite cheese. Mm. Mm-hmm. Charles. Mm. I go with Pepper Jack, but Munster's good too. Mm-hmm. I like Pepper Jack. You don't like Munster, Josh? I do like Munster. Oh, you do. Okay. It, 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 I have to be in the mood for it, but I do like it. Well, you do have to be in the mood for any kind of cheese. Mm-hmm. I like Munster. I just tried this uh, as a few seconds ago, and I love this cheese right here and uh, pepper or. But uh, you know, today I've never, I've never, up to this day I've never had this. I've never had that. But also, <laughs> Stoughton is strong, man. Yeah. It's a fire taste. Yeah, mm-hmm. I will say definitely. Uh, laughing cow is something, and I'll, obviously I've been going on and on and on and on and on. About What's your favorite laughing cow? Um, well, when I'm at work, I can only have the Swiss because it's the least. I, <clears throat> Really when they have. Oh, well, no, it's no, no, they have different flavors. Um, and you know, honestly, because I work with kids and I don't want to take a chance where you know, okay, did you do your homework? Oh, crap. All right, call the nurse. So, uh, when, I, when I'm working in the schools, you really you got to be really careful with what you're eating. Staff, you know, you know, I actually I got in trouble for this, but it was a pun, and of course, it was all in good fun. A pun in good fun. There we go. Mm-hmm. There was, a, there was a room that, and out, of course, there were no kids around, but the room said, no, uh, no nuts allowed. So, <clears throat> meaning peanut allergy, tree allergy. You know. Yeah, that was the same thing at my So, I, you know, okay. I went in, I, I, I went to the door, I said, ah, I, you're going to have to get another sub for this room. Why? I said, because there's no nuts allowed in here. And the teacher was like, nah. okay. <laughs> it took her about two and a half seconds, kind of like, you know. And she, oh, Charlie, come on, you scared me. I said, no, no, I'm sorry. She's, no, Dude, fine. if there were no nuts allowed, then the only people in the room would be women. Hmm. Did anyone get that at all? Yeah, I get it. Oh, oh good. You're, th- <laughs> you're, you're taking it uh, clinically. Yeah. Clinically. All right. I'm amazing grampas. It's all right. I would try the laughing cow cheese. I think, it, of course, it's not all. Or you know, there is some artificial in there, but no, no, uh, no really, wow, it's all the right. most natural cheese on earth. There you go. I like this. Um, my name is Charles Galiz- Galizia. Can and I, I approve this message of cheese. <laughs> <laughs> if I, heard, now, I just put. Try, um, well, he approved this message. All right, time for uh, me to throw the encyclopedia. Uh, encyclopedia. On. So but, should we? Uh, should we all say cheese now? I think that the no. most underrated cheese that I can think of is the. Pecorino Dar Tufa. I just tried that and I love it. it. More yeah, people, I really like this I love one. it. More people need to eat it. You opened up my eyes and my taste buds. The, uh, uh, I also, I think each of the cheeses that are here, but Pecorino Romano, I think, is uh, it's more, it's a grating cheese that I feel I'm is stupid. immensely <laughs> underrated. I haven't ever had honey before. I, or Pecorino Romano is a cheese that people should oh, now I know why. try. If, though I think that most people are familiar with it, I think that having it on the side is just as good as having it on the pasta or on whatever it is you're eating. Exactly, yeah. So Asiago I, I, cheese I is one. delicious. Asiago is so good. Oh, yeah, yeah, I like Asiago too. Hey, this is just thin. It's I got don't like that, honey. It's got that cheddar parmesan, it's got the cheddar texture but the parmesan taste, which okay. reminds me, Parmigiano Reggiano yeah. is there the king of cheeses. It's not Parmesan. Or so, I don't know how many of you watch the program, TV program, or when it was on Wallace and Gromit. But Wallace and Gromit actually saved a specific cheese from going off the market. It's called Wensleydale. One day I was like, hey, why don't they try some of this? And it's actually not that bad. Mm. Hard to find, at least here, but it's, it's, it's not, not too bad. I just realized yeah. I don't like honey. I just... You know, <laughs> I, I, I'm not a honey for Honey goes good with cheese, especially uh, I, the manchego. Yeah. Well, I, I, is this fig spread? That's fig spread. Okay. Fig jam. Is, that's, is that edible or is that just flourish? Oh, that's a, oh, that those is? are fig leaves. 
But is that it? Oh, the, these. Yeah, those are fig leaves. So I, they're not they're, they're no. used for presentation. No, I don't think I don't think you can eat that. Mm -mm. It's not edible. I know because you know I know what leaves taste like. Okay. Um, already I'm glad. glad. Um, is there anything? That, I'm an omnivore. Any, any final <laughs> thoughts to uh, wrap up season five? I'm gonna miss all of you. Uh, we'll miss you too. Right. Yeah. Thanks, Josh, for having us. No. Let's raise our shields. It's my pleasure. Just, we really, really you hope much. that you enjoyed this episode, the rest of season five, and all the other episodes and we've done. Hold on. Josh. Oh. I hope everybody comes back for season six as well. I'll be back. I'll yeah. I'll make, Whether I'll they're on the panel, no, 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 don't go away. Viewers. If I'm coming back, because that makes me feel really sad. As a matter of fact, it makes me want to go. One thing I wanted to say was that the meaning of life, much to uh, Douglas Adams' dismay, is not forty-two. It's cheese. No, it's Monty. For Python. now, keep reading. Keep it's reading. Keep reading. Bye. And eating. Eating. Thank you.